well, let me start by just saying that Alex is certainly one of the fathers of molecular astrophysics. Uh, but the subject from the very beginning has been profoundly empirical, uh, defying theoretical predictions. Before the discovery of interstellar CO, for example, we didn't know that whether 1% of the interstellar gas or 99% was H2. Uh, and the existence of molecular clouds, those great engines of star formation, roughly one half the interstellar mass by uh, in a galaxy like ours, was completely unknown. They are the subject today of much of molecular astrophysics and the closely related study of star formation as well. So in fact, there have been many fathers of molecular astrophysics. Two should be cited along with Alex, or Hertzberg and Towns. Uh, the discovery of CH plus by Hertzberg and Douglas in 1940 is a minor masterpiece and has been mentioned in this meeting already. It still defies theoretical understanding after all these years. It is the first non-terrestrial molecule identified in space before being found in the laboratory and the first of many. His influence, Hertzberg's, in astrophysics is vast and even his very rare mistakes are edifying. His statement at the end of Diatomic Molecules, his great monograph, that the three Kelvin rate excitation of CN, which we now know to be the first measurement of the cosmic microwave background, was an entirely reasonable conclusion at the time. Uh, there are at least two branches of the Towns tree at this meeting, too. Jim Moran is one, I am another. The discovery of OH and interstellar mazes was the direct outgrowth of work in Townsend's lab at Columbia in the 1950s, and very early on he made a prophetic list of the molecules which might be detected in the interstellar gas. Our knowledge of the distribution of molecular clouds in the galaxy can be traced to Townsend's laboratory and his students. But as this meeting shows, Alex's influence and contributions are omnipresent in molecular astrophysics. After Klemper and the, other, and the observers made us understand that ion molecule reactions and positive molecular ions were a necessary component of the interstellar uh, uh, gas, there was a widespread belief that negative ions were too fragile to be found, and partly for this reason, the necessary laboratory backup was not forthcoming. Well, we have now observed at least five polyatomic uh, negative ions, have good laboratory data on even more, and more discoveries will certainly be made fairly soon. Uh, but from the very beginning, I was influenced by two of Alex's papers on negative ions, one very early on with uh, uh, what? Dick McRae, that's right, with Dick, and, one, and one somewhat later uh, with Steve Lepp. And what Alex and Lepp showed was that uh, negative, the ionization balance would shift from positive to neutrals to neutrals and negative ions under certain conditions. So the idea that there were no negative ions in space. Uh, okay, so, so the idea that negative ions. I think this will pick up better okay. or speak right into here. Okay, so the idea that negative ions in space couldn't be found was simply a prejudice. And we, we have now, in the last two years, found a series of negative ions and found them in the laboratory as well. So it looks like the whole bestiary of negative ions will, in some sense, imitate those of positive ions. We already have a significant number to compare with the 14 to 15 positive ions that are known. Uh, And, and beyond that, I must, I must say that Alex's general insight and his good judgment about all of these questions are really, uh, are really quite uh, remarkable. He's always, always, he never says something that is, is uh, uh, trivial or cannot be relied upon. He's, he's one of the soundest speakers that I know in the scientific community. He doesn't, if he doesn't have something sensible to say, he doesn't say anything. Uh, so let, having, with this brief introduction, let me turn the meeting over now to, to an, over, an overview talk by Tom Hartquist, uh, how interstellar chemistry and astrochemistry more generally became 
useful. Tom. 